What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back. Talking Mets to Rob. How's everybody doing? Before I get started and talk about if Suarez and Gray are going to be Queens bound, don't forget, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please hit on that like button. And if you enjoy all my videos, enjoy all my content, and want to be ready for new videos to come and live streams, don't forget, guys, please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you can get all the notifications for my videos when I post and when I go live. All right, guys. So is Eugenio Suarez and Sonny Gray, Queens bound. It is a pretty good possibility. The reason why I say that is because as much as the Mets and J.D. Davis are not seeing eye to eye on, on arbitration, which is already one key why I think that J.D. Davis could be out the door in this trade, but I will show you a good uh, trade scenario uh, that I believe that can get this deal done. But J.D. Davis is not good defensively. Recently, Sandy Alderson talked about he would be okay with J.D. Davis as the everyday third baseman when opening day comes around. I do not believe that one bit. There's a reason why they, the Mets talked to the Cubs. There's a reason why the Mets looked in on this trade with Cincinnati. There's a lot of reasons why the Mets and, and looked at uh, Colorado and Nolan Arenado. There's a reason why. Even though the Mets and the Rockies didn't speak, the Mets were looking for a third baseman throughout the whole offseason, and they still are. I don't believe the fact that they want J.D. Davis at third base. Now, a lot of things can change. It could be Bauer. The cost of Bauer could be too much. Jackie Bradley Jr. There's a lot of uh, scenarios where this trade might not happen, but I can guarantee you there's more of a chance of the Mets to get a new third baseman than there is – of the Mets getting Bauer. And the reason why is because I feel like the Mets, if they can solidify the third base spot defensively with Eugenio Suarez, it is really damn good. It's a really good infield. You need that defense around your pitching staff. And to look more into Suarez and his numbers, we know that he's very good defensively. I actually think he's better defensively than Chris Bryant. And the reason why I say that, even though he looks big, he looks like a stocky guy, he's quick. He's got a great arm at third. He's got a really good glove at third. And he makes all the throws. He can play. He can pick them. He can go in for a bunt. He's quick. Eugenio Suarez will be a perfect third baseman for the New York Mets. If we look at his stats, as, as always, I like to go back three to four years just to give you an idea of how good this player or how not this player is. But with Eugenio Suarez, we're going to start in 2017. 2017, he was 25 years old. He played 156 games, 632 at-bats. He hit 26 home runs, 82 RBIs, and he batted 260. The average wasn't that good, but the numbers all around, pretty good. 2018, he was an all-star, 26 years old, 143 games, 606 at-bats, 34 home runs, 104 RBIs, and he batted 283. This is a really good season. Do I expect that if he comes to the Mets? I like that, no doubt. But at the end of the day, this is the production we need offensively at third base, including what he can do defensively at third base. Let's go to 2019, 27 years of age. Played 159 games. This guy plays, guys. That's what I got to explain to you. That's what I got to focus on. He plays. The biggest problem with the Mets over the years, the guys don't play. We need guys who can play every day, who could be in the lineup. You can write them in that lineup every day. 2019, 27 years old. 159 games. 575 at-bats. 49 home runs, 103 RBIs. He his higher, he had a higher strikeouts, uh, the most in his career is at, at 189, and in batting average, 271. Now, the reason why the strikeouts were that high because he was swinging for the fences. We know that. He hit 49 home runs, 103 RBIs, but his batting average did not hurt too much. He batted 271. He hit 49 home runs, 103 RBIs, he did have a lot of strikeouts at 198, but he still had an average of 271, so he puts the bat in the ball. He makes things happen. In 2020, in a 60-game season, obviously he's 28 years old. He played 57 games. He had 198 at-bats. He had 15 home runs, 38 RBIs. Now, his batting average 
really hurt. He batted 202. I don't like to focus in on 2020 as much as other seasons, not just because it's a shortened season, but with COVID, a lot of players took it differently. But again, you have to look at the average. He batted 202. It wasn't good at all. He hit home runs. RBIs are pretty good in 60 games, but his batting average really hurt. I mean, he had a drop off of nearly 70 points in his average. So, yes, 2020 hurt him, but I think he can be the player that he was in 2019 and 2018. I don't think, I'm not expecting 45 home runs, 40 home runs. If he can hit 30, knocking 90, bat 270, 260, I'm happy with that. So, with Eugenio Suarez, that's his stats. I think he'd be perfect for this team offensively and defensively. But another reason why the Mets should trade for him and why it could be a good reason why the Mets can go after him, his contract. Let's go over that right now. Now, he signed a six-year six year deal for $66 million. In 2020, he made uh, nine and a quarter. Obviously, that was uh, retroactive, you know, because of the only 60-game season. In 2021, he would be making $10.5 million at the age of 29. In 2022 to 2024, we make an $11 million. And in 2025, there's a club option for $15 million. So depending on if he's been playing well for the Mets at third base, the Mets might pick up that option at 33 years old. But here's the thing. You make this trade, you have your third baseman for at least for the next four years, for 2021 through 2024. You have your solidified third baseman defensively and offensively. Now, he will be an unrestricted free agent at 20 uh, in 2026 at 34 years old. At that moment, maybe there'll be another uh, player that we'll be looking at. It really depends. Maybe McNeil can go to third. It really depends. But those th- you have your third baseman for the next four to five years. That's a guarantee. Now, the other player in the deal that we need to talk about is Sonny Gray. Now, obviously, Sonny Gray, we know – Uh, what he did with the Yankees. He wasn't good with the Yankees. A lot of people talked about he couldn't pitch in New York. Fine. That's okay. But at the same time, you got to look into the fact that was it just New York or was it what the Yankees were telling him to do when he pitched? According to Sonny Gray, it was because a lot of the time the Yankees did not want him to throw his slider. And that really affected him. If you notice, when he, as soon as he went to Cincinnati, he started to throw all his pitches again and he pitched great. I mean, he was one of their best pitches over the years. And in 2019, he was an all-star. So when we look at his stats, and we're going to look again, I'm going to go, I'm going to start with the Yankees years from 2017 down to 2020. So in 2017, he had a 372 ERA. In the American League, that's not too bad for the Yankees. He was uh, let's see, he was he pitched 65 innings. He gave up 11 home runs, 27 walks, and he had 59 strikeouts. So the, obviously the Yankees got him in a trade. So he didn't pitch a lot of games for the Yankees. But, again, he was pretty good. You know, altogether he had around like a 380 ERA uh, with the Yankees and, since, and with Oakland. So he was good. But in 2018, when we look at it, at the age of 28, he had a 490 ERA. That's not good at all. It really isn't. He pitched 130 innings. You know, he pitched a good amount of innings. But at the end of the day, with in with the two years with the Yankees, he struggled. Whatever the, the situation was, if it was New York, if it was them not telling him to uh, use his slider or the pitches that he wanted, the thing is, when he went to Cincinnati and back to the and went to the National League, he pitched better with Cincinnati. In 2019, he was an all-star. He had a 287 ERA, pitched 175 innings. He had 205 strikeouts, gave up 17 home runs and 68 walks. Sonny Gray is a really good pitcher. He's still young. He's in his prime. I really think that the Yankees really didn't mess him up when it came to telling him to not use certain pitches. And I think that really got into his head, which infected him mentally when it came to New York. I don't think New York was the only benefactor. I do believe that if he becomes a Met, he will pitch to his capabilities like he did in Cincinnati. Not maybe at an all-star level, but we're not looking at him to be at an all-star level. We're looking at him to be a solid three, possibly solid four. That's what we're looking at here. And then with his contract, when we look at his contract right now, he's got two more years left in his contract. 
In 2021, he, he's getting $10 million. In 2022, he's getting $10.2 million. And then there's a cl- club option for, 20, for 2023 for $12 million. So at the end of the day, Sonny Gray and Eugenio Suarez would be a perfect addition for this team. And you could say, yeah, but with them being under control for a couple more years, Eugenio Suarez and Gray, what do you have to give up? Well, this is what I would give up. And the reason why I say this and the reason why I make this proposal is because, again, you got to give something to get something. And Eugenio Suarez and Gray are all-star players at their position. So what would I give up? I would give up J.D. Davis, Ronnie Mauricio, and Thomas Sapati. Why do I say that? You would say, Ronnie Mauricio, really? He's, in, he's our number one prospect. Agree. But where is he going to play? If all indications are the Mets are going to sign Francisco Lindor, he is your shortstop for the next seven to 10 years. If you're going to bring in Eugenio Suarez, Ronnie Mauricio cannot play third base because Suarez is going to be around for the next three, possibly four years. And then you have McNeil at second base, probably long-term as well. So Ronnie Mauricio has nowhere to play on his team. J.D. Davis obviously doesn't have a spot. He can't play left field, and he's not a really good third baseman. So he'll be going in that deal. And again, with Thomas Zepecki, it's really possible that he would be a really good addition to this team in 2021. But at the end of the day, he's not a hard thrower. He's a finesse type of pitcher. And he might not move up to the, ma- to, to the majors as good as we might have expected. So he has to go into that deal too. And clearly every team needs pitching. So you're given two of your top 10 minor leaguers prospects in the Mets system, along with J.D. Davis. That's the, the trade that I really want to focus on. I really want to get into because Eugenio Suarez and Sonny Gray, even though they're under control, they're a lot better than what you're sending back. We can't keep on relying on all these prospects going to be good. We don't know. Even though we know Ronnie Mauricio is our, the Mets' top prospect, he was in the top 100 in Major League Baseball. Just And Thomas Zipaki is is in the top 10. He's nine in the Mets system. But at the end of the day, Ronnie Mauricio would have nowhere to play. At this moment in time, he has nowhere to play. If he was ready now, could he play third base? He might defensively can play third base, but could he hit in the major league level? We don't know. And this team is not waiting and rebuilding to see where these guys are at. We're past that phase. We're in the winning phase now. We got to start winning. We got to start making the playoffs. I'm sick of 500 seasons. I'm sick of under 500 seasons. I'm sick of having bad first halves, and then we have to claw our way back in the second half. I want a consistent winning team. Nobody says we got to win 100 games every year. That would be nice, but could we consistently be 90-plus win team? making the playoffs, fighting for a division, fighting for a wild card. Why can't we do that? And this trade can make this happen. And to wait for these minor leaguers that we have no room for for the next couple of years in Ronnie Mauricio and Zipucky. Yes, he can be a part of the bullpen, possibly can stop, but most likely he'll be a bullpen arm. As of right now, we got Lucchese as a left-hander. He looks like The Mets could possibly still get Justin Wilson. So at the end of the day, we want to make this team better. We're here to win now. We are not a rebuilding team anymore. We are ready for the prime time. You got to make deals. You can't keep on sitting on prospects and focus on, well, this guy is going to be good. Yeah, we know that. The the, Probably the one guy that I wish we never got rid of was was Kalenic. But at the end of the day, that's, that's done with. We have Diaz. Cano is in the wind. But we have Diaz. We have have to deal with it. But he is our closer. So at the end of the day, sooner or later, we have to figure out why this team is ready to win. We are ready to win. And this trade can make us and get us to that level of winning. You guys might not agree. I'm really focused on getting this team better. And there's a reason why Sandy Alderson talked to the Cubs, talked to the Reds, looked in on Arenado, all those teams that the Mets were looking at were were for trading for a third baseman. Why is that? Because Sandy said, oh, I expect J.D. Davis to be our 
uh, starting third baseman on opening day. What else is he going to say? That J.D. Davis is still on his team. There's a lot of people that were in my comments uh, d yesterday and the, and the day before about talking about Sandy Olsen said that. Sandy Olsen, Olsen also said that Rosario and Jimenez are going to be a big part of this team. And where are they now? They're in Cleveland. So take Sandy Olsen's words with a grain of salt. Sandy's always the one to beat around the bush when it comes to pushing up his plays and talking about his players. It's always been like that with Sandy. That's what Sandy does. So to give you the trade once again to recap, Eugenio Suarez, Sonny Gray from the Reds for Ronnie Mauricio, Thomas Zupucky, and J.D. Davis. That's the trade that I'll be willing to give the number one ranked prospect in the Mets system and the number nine ranked prospect in the Mets system in Zipucky. So that's the trade I really want to focus on. I really think this is a trade the Mets can do and can afford. I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget, guys, please press the like button if you enjoyed this video and smash that subscribe button so you can get all the posts and all the notifications of when I post my videos and do live streams. I want to thank you guys for watching. And again, let's go Mets.